Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever the hell time it is, whenever you're viewing this. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about why green Scotch-Brite pads um, and even uh, Rolock bristle discs are bad for your engine. I'm going to explain to you exactly how and why these essentially spell death for your engine if you use them to clean components um, that have any contact with the oil system. You can get away with using them in your um, in your cool in something that deals with your coolant system. Um, might chew up the bearings in your um, water pump um, if it gets past the seals or if the particles get past the seals. But uh, somehow, this is still accepted to some people to clean cylinders and stuff like that um, and gasket surfaces. Um, I had somebody the other day mention um, that they use these things all the time to clean cylinders um, for a rebuild. And I took 10, 15 minutes out of my day to uh, educate that individual and uh, show him some things, um, some information that's been post posted out there on the net on why these things are essentially a death sentence to an engine. Um, there's, again, there's a lot of different information out there um about these things um and all of it pretty much true um but i'm going to go into all of this in just a second here so i'm going to be kind of using a connecting rod and some connecting rod bearings as an example as well as a little crummy diagram that or a little sketch that i that i made real quick with my dry erase board so here we are here we have um the sketch i made i know i'm not an artist okay um, but try to kind of follow along as best you can right here. We have the layers of oil. Okay. This is what your oil looks like inside your engine. Okay. Around your bearings. In reality, there's more than three layers. Okay. But we're just going to use three just for simplicity. Okay. This is kind of what your oil actually looks like. Okay. It, as it's in motion, it's kind of, the molecules are actually kind of rolling on each other. Okay, all these are in motion. Okay, they're they're constantly in motion. Okay, this is what your oil looks like after aluminum oxide has been introduced. Okay, doesn't take a genius to kind of see how this can be really, really bad, really, really quick. Okay, um, so what happens when you use a green scotch brite pad to clean your cylinders um, or any other part of your block um, or even your cylinder heads that have or that deal with oil or have oil running through them, um, this is what you get because the aluminum oxide particles, they're so tiny. Um, one, they're almost impossible to get out um, once you introduce them to get all of them out. And then two, um, your oil filter isn't going to capture them all. Most oil filters out there aren't full flow, meaning that there's always oil being bypassed or there's uh, oil bypassing the filter element itself. Um, so the oil filter never really has a chance to filter all of them out. And then in a lot of cases, the particles are actually so damn small that they can't be filtered out. Um, uh, I'm sorry about all the sniffling here. Uh, I'm kind of fighting off a cold. Um, but you can see here that we've introduced particles, okay, aluminum oxide particles into our oil stream, okay, and what you've essentially created here is a cutting fluid. Okay, you have all these abrasive material or all this abrasive material that's been that came off of your Scotch Brite pad that is now floating around in between your say crankshaft and your bearing. Okay, as you, you can see, I have labeled here. I didn't label the oil. I didn't think I needed to. Um, but it's not hard to see why this is bad. Okay, and once this starts, there's no saving it. Once it starts, it's just going to get worse, and eventually you're going to spin a bearing, um, and you're going to get um, some pretty nasty knocking, okay? Um, all other, all kinds of other things can happen, go wrong after this, too. Um, it, it's just going to go south, because once you start knocking material off of this crankshaft, okay, and then also material off of these bearings, there's going to be more and more particles introduced into your oil, the, and your filter's eventually going to clog. Your filter's going to go into 100% bypass, and you're going to get more and more of this crap. Um, this is why 
the companies that do that reman engines. Okay, I'm sure you've seen reman engines, um, you know, listed on eBay and um, even at your local auto parts store, uh, AutoZone stuff like that. Not that I necessarily trust one of those things, but they will not allow these things to be used at all in their um, while pe while they're while their technicians are rebuilding these engines. Um, because they know what's going to happen. There's been, there's been a lot of, or ver, uh, quite a few studies, so to speak, as to why engines were failing and where aluminum oxide was being introduced from. Because what they were finding was they were finding upon teardown, um, I think it was GM, uh, if I remember correctly, GM found that these bearings had aluminum oxide particles embedded in them. And they found out that their techs were using Scotch Bright pads um, to uh, clean up gasket surfaces uh, when they had a head gasket job um, or a cylinder head replacement. And it was essentially destroying the engines later. Yeah, I know this bearing's kind of chewed up, it's not getting used. Um, but I mean, that's just one example. Um, so, whatever you do, do not use these damn things. Um, I know it's tempting. Um, but it's really not worth it. There's other ways of cleaning your cylinders, much better ways um, that will get all of the grit and honing material, or I'm sorry, um, all of the metal that has been introduced um, into the crosshatch from the cutting or the boring and the honing. Uh, one of those ways I kind of detail with, uh, with, uh, ATF and uh, Magic Erasers. Uh, again, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm stumbling here. I'm, I'm, pr I'm pretty sick. Another thing I really don't like is these roll lock discs for head gasket jobs. Um, I was using these at one point. I have used them before. I do not care for them anymore because I found out through some research, and this is a white one. Um, this is for aluminum. I have a green one around here, but I can't find it right now. So you can tell this thing's been used, but these things actually have aluminum oxide in them as well, uh, molded into the plastic material. People think that these are just straight plastic and that they're safe to use. Um, I don't recommend them. I would rather see people using a chemical um, gasket remover like Permatex makes, um, or even just a straight razor blade turn uh, on a 90 scrape on the gasket surface. Um, I think it's safer than this crap. Um, but if you do need to use this, if you end up using this, at a bare minimum, find a way to protect your cylinders to keep the grit and the crap that these produce out of the cylinders. Um, one way I've seen is using grease. Um, and then find your oil passages that move oil from the block into the cylinder head and plug it. Use an ear plug um, or some other material to keep the shit from falling down into that oil passage uh, and make sure you leave it proud leave it standing up a little bit so that way you don't forget it you don't you know go to put the gasket on and the damn thing's still in there don't set it below the deck surface leave it a little proud and just remember to pull it uh, most engines usually have even overhead cam engines generally only have one um one oil passage coming out of the block to supply the head um i don't know of any that have multiple um but then again, I haven't worked on everything out there. Uh, so again, if there is an oil passage or two, plug it. Um, but please do not use these damn green scotch Bright pads. They will destroy your engine. And then on top of that, if you're using this to clean a crosshatch, because of the grit, this is 600 grit, you're changing your crosshatch, okay? The finish that your machine has put on there, hopefully you put it on there right, um, or did what was required by your ring manufacturer, um, you're, you're changing it. Okay, and then your rings may not seat. Okay, um, so don't use these things. Use a, a method that is not going to hurt your crosshatch. Even if you do use, or even if you don't use my method, use something that's not going to change that crosshatch. Don't use any kind of abrasive materials. Um, use something that is very gentle and just get the crap out of that crosshatch. Um, but don't don't go using these the, using Scotch Bright these Scotch Bright pads on your crank journals, um, your connecting rods, your pistons, none of it. In fact, don't even let this stuff come near your engine. It's not worth it. And I, 
<coughs> excuse me, I'm still surprised that I'm running into people that use these things. Um, I know some people that race um, and they talk about that have talked about using these things, and I've steered them away from them. So again, please leave the Scotch Brite alone. It, it's going to be it's going to be death for your engine. It may not be instant death, but it will be death down the line. And you know, you really don't want to spend all that money on a rebuild um, to end up having an engine that lasts you know only a third of its life, maybe even uh, a few thousand miles, depending on how much of this crap is left in there. Um, because like I said, there's really not a way to get rid of it all once it's introduced. Um, not for the guy at home anyway. So, uh, you know, have a nice day and, uh, leave this crap alone. Thanks.